All right, moving on to the next video, making some good progress here. But uh, before I started it, I just wanted to give a shout out to uh, Armed Forces Supply in Converse, Texas. Uh, over the last couple years, I've got to know the owner, uh, David, pretty well. And he's, he's a good family man, family run business with a couple other people. Um, he has a physical store in Converse, Texas, and then he also has some warehouses and stuff off on the uh, side. And uh, he has an online store and also an eBay store. I'll uh, put a link in the description to uh, all three of those places. But uh, I got a bunch of parts that I actually needed from him. Uh, from time to time, he gets LMTV parts, filters, you know, seats, I mean, all kinds of cool stuff. He, he gets a lot of really unique stuff, and he sells everything for a pretty good price. So uh, definitely go check them out, and uh, if, if you're dealing with them at all, just tell them uh, Colt sent you. Didn't expect to be doing this project in this video, but uh, I got three of these. Left side cab air springs. I needed both sides left and right, but uh, my thought, and it was confirmed by one of the other people on the Facebook group was you can just unbolt and take the metal piece off the top and bolt the top back on to the one that was on your truck and really the only difference is this. So super excited I got these for a phenomenal deal. I'm gonna start working on that. All right here's what you need for tools. Uh, for me I needed an 18 millimeter uh, to switch around a left to a right you may not need that. 15 millimeter. Also a stubby 15 millimeter is going to make life way better. 9 sixteenths. Uh, I have 5 sixteenths small uh, ratchet. 15 millimeter deep socket. And then I had two extensions. If you only have this one, it'll probably still work okay. Uh, I decided to use also a, a finger ratchet. Uh, brass. Little brush or something. Uh, that's going to be to clean up the threads on the brass fittings. Teflon tape for sealing up the brass fittings. And this is one of the factory type cab air springs. And there's your part information right there. It's a NSN 2510-01-481-7663. And uh, there's also that part number there. 12421438-004. This part number is going to come up as a left side, but as you'll see, I had multiple of these and I made it work on the right side pretty easily. I'm going to start by removing the passenger side. These are 15 millimeter. These are 5 sixteenths. It's 9 sixteenths for those air fittings, and I'm going to label them so I don't mix them up. Here's the old one I took off the passenger side. This is the new one. You can see threaded ports are on that side and then the pin, so it's reversed. So I'm gonna work on taking this metal piece off, this metal piece off, and swapping them. You can tell a big difference there. I bet you the shock that's inside the bag is freaking blown out too from sitting on that thing empty. Um, obviously I'm not doing this, but there is a way to like rebuild these, buying just these parts. I don't have to do that, but in the description where I put the different sections of the video, I'm going to share a link to the Steel Soldiers form, and uh, they have a thread with part numbers and stuff like that if you want to source them yourself and find them. Okay, got it switched over. The only thing you got to pay attention to is this is just like a little rubber plug. I'm going to pull that out when I make my way over there, but uh, make sure it's coming through here.
All right, what I just did was uh, I decided it would be dumb to try to line this up and thread it after I put it in the truck. And then I also figured I would check and put a little drop of lubrication. This is a little check valve in here. Uh, if you take it apart, make sure you don't put it back together the wrong way. Pay attention to how you take it apart. And then these are actually supposed to face up, but I had moved, removed this so it wasn't in the way of me getting at the nuts and bolts. So I'm going to leave it like this and then do the half turn on it once I get it in there. All right, passenger side is all installed. Hopefully it'll go relatively as smooth on the other side as this side. Well, I finished up doing the driver's side yesterday evening. Phone battery died and it got too dark to really record anything meaningful. So I did already test it and uh, everything's working. You can hear the air go to it and it doesn't quite lift up and all of a sudden it goes. It's working. I had to adjust the cab tilt or uh, not the cab tilt, but the little... I had to adjust that right there, which kind of adjusts how high or low the cab sits. Uh, it was tilted all the way back on mine, which made the cab ride a little more stiff, and it kind of made it look like the cab was tilting forward, so I moved it right to the middle, and I'm happy with it's where, where it's at. And you can see the bags are full, now you can see how far above the pin it is. And uh, no air leaks. No, nothing. Happy with it. I originally was going to do the Midwest military equipment aftermarket upgrade, and this cost me 10% of what that did. So, saved me a lot of money to put towards other projects. Um, hey, in case you need to hold rolls of Scott's shop towels, one of the, uh, <laughs> the, the upper piece on the cab air spring fits it absolutely perfect. I'm probably going to end up using this. We're going to pull off the door panel here. Uh, last time the window went down, it didn't want to go back up, and I kind of forced it up, and I'm going to try to troubleshoot what's in there. All right, we figured it out, what was making it bind. These two bolts right here behind it, there is a, it's a bracket that fastens on to this, which is the track. So as you turn this, it feeds either into the track or out of the track into this tube. I doubt you're going to be able to see it on the camera. But where those two bolts are, it's supposed to be like welded and it's not. It broke free. This was able to move up and down and that was causing it to bind. Well, it's not binding anymore. And what I did, and this is not my typical type of fix, but <laughs> I drilled a hole to make sure that the track wouldn't pop out and put it into that scrap piece of two by four. And that holds it up where it's supposed to be and the window goes up and down fine. Then I just put a couple screws to hold it in place. Now, the reason why I went with such a cheap fix like this, one, I wanted my window to go up and down. And two, the regulators I was able to find at cheapest was $165 this was nothing. So if it works and it lasts a year, I'll be happy and I'll keep my eye out for a regulator. And if I find one for cheap, then I'll do that. And while I got this off, I'm going to find a bolt for this because my knob has been just on there loose. It's all back together. I left this plastic off because it wouldn't go on right with this bolt and stuff, but uh, use the lock bolt and some washers and stuff I had. So I actually have a knob and uh, put all new of these little press fits in. Better than it ever was. All right, my next thing is gonna be doing the service on the transmission. And boy, is it wet under here. Uh, at first, I thought it was a transmission leak. Then I realized that all that hydraulic fluid was dripping down from up top, and I thought it might be that. But then after I fixed that leak, it still kept getting wet. I noticed some drips coming on top of the shaft right here. I figured since I need to, I bet you that gasket is dry rotted or something in there. I'm gonna go and do the service 
and uh, hopefully just putting the gaskets and stuff is going to do it. The drain plug for the transmission is right here on the right hand side. You see this is the fuel tank, it's right next to the exhaust. And then there is a drain at the bottom of the transfer case. I uh, put my wrench in there just to get it ready, or my ratchet. That thing's only finger tight. Here's the tools and parts. Extra breaker bar extension, ratchet extension, finger ratchet, 15 millimeter wrench, torque wrench. You don't have to have this, but I have one. 15 millimeter socket, a screwdriver, and a putty knife. I uh, use these to get the covers off that were stubborn and to separate the filters from the covers. Pick for getting the gaskets off, and then just another ratchet breaker bar, plenty of rags, and the TM work, not work group, but like the third PDF file or the third book, um, 8 Tech 9, 8 32. And it's also in the PDF file, it starts at page 668. And then I also printed out the uh, loop chart with the amounts. At the oil change, 31.8 quarts of 15 weight 40 is what I put in. This is the filter kit, 2 9 or 5 4 0 4 9 or 3. Uh, you could also see the NSN number right there. Not all of these kits, for whatever reason, come with the two seals or O rings that you need for the drain plugs probably because a majority of these service kits that go into commercial trucks don't have a transfer case, so they don't have a second drain plug like we do. The part number just for that O-ring, if you end up needing it, is an Allison part number, 23019664 is what that is. I'll talk about it again later in the video too and show what I'm talking about. If you're getting one that has an NSN number on it like this that was military, more likely than not, it's going to have uh, that proper two in it so that could be a lot of the reason why there's some wetness on this side too i'm really happy that didn't fall out while i was driving but uh, i'm going to work my way through this and hopefully i don't make a big mess cleaned off my drain plugs there really wasn't that much stuff on the magnets and lined up all my gaskets and stuff here. But as a lot of people have said, these filter kits only come with one O-ring and you need two because this truck's got a transfer case. You can see, see how like jacked up that O-ring is? This is the one that was on the transfer case. Every time this is serviced before, they probably never actually replaced that one. That's why it had to be so tight to not leak. Luckily, in all my parts acquisition, I found this open bag that was from a service kit and it's got one of those O-rings. So the reason why the TM says to remove the shaft, front drive shaft, is because of this problem. You can't take the whole assembly out like I did on the last side. So what I'm hoping I'll be able to do is just fiddle with it and get the filter off so I can get the cap and then the filter out and work it that way. Um, probably should have moved my truck a little bit so that the yoke was on the flat part and it would have helped a lot, but uh, I think I'll still be able to do it. All right, I got all these pieces off. I cleaned them up and put the new gaskets on. It's pretty easy to match them up. On the driver's side, one that's near the shaft, I'm leaving the filter off because you need to put that on after you get it. Pass the drive shaft, unless you decided to remove the shaft, then you can put it all back together. In the kit, these two squarish gaskets, um, they're not used in this, this application, I guess. And uh, the TM doesn't say anything about it either. There is a pattern of tightening them up. And this is looking at it from the bottom. And you can see on the left there, it says 38 to 45 uh, foot-pounds the torque. Just finished filling it up. 
did 31.8 quarts, like the TM says, at an oil change. Uh, the dipstick was showing it a little bit high. I went out and drove it, and it, it's definitely shifting a lot smoother. The very first shift, it kind of sounded like it sucked a bunch of the fluid where it needed to go, but took it easy, and I got to bring it out and bring it for a good drive. The truck should be idling when you're filling it. Otherwise, the fluid's going to have a hard time going in. I refilled mine with uh, Rotella 15 weight 40 engine oil again. Uh, some people switch it over to ATF. Uh, I keep a ton of 15 weight 40 around and I'm in a warm environment so I don't need to worry about it. Hoping it's going to cure that oil leak but like I said I got to take it for a good drive. Um, I think at that I'm going to wrap up this video since there's been a lot of fast forward of me working but uh, I'm really happy I got airbags on the cab. Hopefully that oil leak will be repaired and uh, we're getting there.